here's the big question. You're interested in value investing and valuing and evaluating businesses on a deep level, but you don't know how, even after researching for hours, probably dozens of hours, hundreds of hours on the internet, and because nobody else shows you how to do it. This podcast has all those answers and much more about value investing and finance. My name is Jason Rivera. Welcome to Value Investing in Your Car. Hey, Jason here. This episode of Value Investing in Your Car, we're going to talk about are your expenses earning a high rate of investment return? Oh, my, my, might not be something you ever thought about before. Before we get to that, I need to remind you that this series is now available as a podcast anywhere in the world for free. Um, you can get this podcast for free anywhere. Podbean, um, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, SoundCloud, iTunes, um, and much more. Any major podcasting platform you can find this podcast on and listen to value investing and investing education for free. So, what do I mean by are you earning a high investment return on your expenses? Have you ever thought about your expenses as an investment? Have you ever thought of how your expenses, if they go up and you're not earning a high return, you're actually destroying capital? Have you thought of if your expenses go up and you're in, you 10x your profitability, how you're deploying your capital very well? All these kind of things. <clears throat> so, first off, this entire concept. I was thinking of, um, I had a meeting in Dubai, or not in Dubai, I had a meeting with a client from the UAE this morning who has businesses in the UAE and India. Um, I'm advising, to a some degree, companies, or lately I've been uh, advising companies to some degree that have operations around the world and I've been digging into their private company balance sheets, uh, P&L statements, the income statements, and cash flow statements. And I've thought about this concept for a while, but never really until recently figured out how to put it into words. And it's pretty simple. Again, if you watch any of my content, if you listen to any of my content, read any of my content, I like to make extremely complex subjects as simple as humanly possible. What are expenses? So let's go all the way to being. What are expenses? They're cost for your business, hopefully to increase your operational capability, revenues, cash flow, profitability, all these kind of things. The way I look at expenses, when I look at an income statement or a cash flow statement, the way I look at expenses are as investments which sounds a little bit weird, but you need to think about it that way from a business owner perspective, especially if you are looking at a private business, how to advise private businesses, how to advise public companies. Um, if you are looking to buy a stock, is this XYZ stock earning a high return on their investments, including expenses? Um, let me give you an example. The company I was talking with earlier this morning, They've more than two and a half times increased their expenses in marketing and advertising in just the last year. From, well, I'm not gonna give out the exact numbers, but they more than two and a half times them. But profits did not rise in that same time. So were they earning a high return on their investments? Again, I look at expenses as investments. Were they earning a high return on their investments in advertising and marketing if profits did not go up either about the same or go up even higher than the expense rate? No. How do I know that? Because if you are do if you are advertising well and marketing well, your profitability should go up at least kind of in relation to the percentage that you increase marketing or even higher if you're marketing really well. This company's expenses rose by two and a half times in terms of marketing budget, but their profitability stayed about the same. Not good, right? So another way to think about this is if I give you a dollar, can you turn it into, which is an investment you can use to invest, if you put it $1 into your marketing, can you earn at least about a dollar or more return on your money? 
Or if you use a dollar, do you only get about 50 cents back? Or do you just get 20 cents back? Do you get no return whatsoever if you're not marketing well? This is, when I first brought this up to the companies, and I brought this up to every com all the companies that I've uh, been advising and talking with over the last uh, year or so, they kind of look at me like, I've never thought about it that way, but it makes sense. And then they, we get talking about expenses and investments and are you earning a high return on your expenses? Usually the answer is no. If, if they're calling me or if they're seeking me out for help, it's usually because they need help, not because they're, they usually have good businesses, but they want to go to the next level type of thing. And they don't necessarily know how to read balance sheets, financial statements, cash flow statements, um, income statements, all these kind of things. And if they do, they don't know how to look at them like I look at them because I frankly have trained myself to look at things like this. <clears throat> Another example from a company I'm advising right now is there, there was a massive increase in salaries and what was it? From 2016 to 2017, there was a massive, I think almost two times increase in salaries and what they called sundry expenses. Salary is pretty straightforward, right? You pay somebody a salary, they do a good job, they don't go do a good job, whatever. Sundry expenses, I said, what are these? What are these? Because they didn't have the footnotes on them. So what are these? They couldn't tell me what they were. Sundry expenses, again, from a United States perspective, and I figured out this is different in the UAE and uh, India um, to some degree. But sundry expenses, I think of things like buying water for the team, coffee for the team, snacks for the team, stuff like that. They couldn't tell me what the expenses were. And so the way I turned to them is, is it was essentially $250,000 worth or the equivalent of about $250,000. And I said, so this money could be gone. This $250,000, you don't know what happened to it. You don't know what this expense is. They said, no. And the, the way I kind of said it to them during my meeting with them was essentially this is $250,000 not only taken out of the company that you can invest and could have earned a return on, you could have paid down debt, you could have done bought other companies, you could have done whatever with it, but it's also $250,000 out of your pockets because this is your company, you're a private owner, this is your company. So this is essentially you not knowing what this expense is. Somebody could have taken this expense, said they were um, sundry expenses and embezzled it from the company and they could be gone. You don't know. Um, you have to be cognizant of what your expenses are because they are investments. Have to, have to, have to, have to. Another point is I remember reading years ago um, about Shelby Davis, insurance, um, insurance investor, uh, he built up, a, I think, from pretty much scratch, a billion-dollar-plus empire that he's now passed on to his sons and his grandsons. But I remember reading in the book that he was walking, I think it was probably towards the end of the book, he was walking somewhere in New York with his grandson, and his grandson wanted a hot dog for like a dollar, and he wouldn't get his, his, uh, his son or his grandson the hot dog because he was telling him how much he could compound a dollar over time that wasn't spent on the hot dog, but that was spent on the business. So, and that's a funny example, that's an extreme example, but it's still true. Every expense you have is an investment. You should view it as an investment. Is this investment in marketing going to earn me at least, uh, if I put in $1, is it gonna earn me at least one $1 in return? If you don't know what you're doing in marketing, it might you earn you earn you zero percent return or twenty five cents on the dollar. Is that worth your time and money and capital? No, in my opinion, most of the time, no, because you're essentially destroying seventy five percent of the capital plus. In that example, are you going to earn turn that one dollar into three dollars? That's a three hundred percent return. So, is that worth your time? 
yes, that's essentially give me more money and print more money is what that is. Um, that's what uh, Russell Brunson, a marketer, calls being a rainmaker. <laughs> um, if you can make it rain like that, you are pretty much always hireable because you can always find clients for other people and make other people money. This is why I view expenses as investments. And this is throughout the entire balance sheet or throughout the entire income statement or P&L statement. I, I go through when I get a company's financials, whether it's a private company or public company. I go through the expenses pretty much line by line and try to figure out, is this expense earning a high return on capital? Is this expense a worthwhile investment? Is this expense useful to the company? Or is it just an expense that you are using just because? Um, for example, things like water, electricity, internet, phone bills, those are pretty much necessary in business. Everything else, I look at it as an investment. Salaries, uh, commissions. Um, is this person, are these individuals, is this team worth their investment in them, my investment in them? Are they bringing back XYZ return? Can they be trained better? That leads me to the next step. If they're not, can they be trained better? Am I doing something wrong? Um, do they not understand the goal? Um, um, are they on the wrong team in the company? Should they be here? Um, all these kind of things go into play after that mindset. But and that goes all the way down the line. There's usually a line called other expenses, and you have to look in the footnotes, even for pri uh, private companies, to figure out what those are. In this company's case that I talked with this morning, it was things like rent and marketing and advertising and um, paint and other stuff. And I said, even if you can, even if you can cut the this number by, and it was a substantial amount of money. It was, I think, in total, equivalent to more than seven million dollars throughout the entire company. Um, in quote unquote other expenses. So even if you can cut this by 5%, if you can cut this by 5%, that's 5% essentially more cash flow for you, more 5% higher pro uh, operating profits, and 5% more capital you can use to invest in the business, uh, paying down debt, uh, paying dividend, uh, hiring more team members, Expanding into other regions, um, um, what else? And others. There's more examples. Essentially, if you have capital, it gives you options. But if you expense it, again, if you invest it poorly, you are destroying capital. If you invest it well, you are increasing not only your capital, but you're increasing the value of your company. So let me go back. If you are destroying capital <clears throat> and you're not investing or using your expenses well, you're not only destroying capital, you're destroying the value of your company. If you invest well, you're increasing your cash flow and capital and you're increasing the value of your company. That's why you need to look at every invest or every expense as an investment um, because it truly is. Can I cut out any of my expenses? If I can, what should I cut? How much should I cut? And where, to the second level of that, where do I use it? then use this capital? So this company, again, that I talked with this morning, we were looking to cut expenses probably five, at least five percentage points across the board for the entire company. And that should be relatively easy to do. We were then going to use that extra capital to pay down debt, which is significant at the company. And then after that, after paying down debt, so we get a double effect of lowering expenses, lowering finance costs like interest rates or interest expenses. So we get a double effect here. And then once we pay down some debt and reduce expenses to the level we think they should be at, then you invest that money in another asset, whether it's again, internal operations like marketing, sales, whatever, 
hiring other people, um, expanding regions, expanding product lines, um, <clears throat> buying other assets like real estate, um, buying out a competitor, something like that. But if you can't do that and you don't know where to cut and what to look for, you might be cutting something essential to the company or you might be destroying capital or you might not be investing in capital well. Um, one of these three things, and again, this is some super high level stuff. I hope I explain this pretty well and easy to understand. Again, I like explaining things easy to understand ways, but this is some super high level stuff that I talk about with these potential clients. If you have the capital, it gives you options. If you don't have the capital and you're not investing well, or actually, let me back up. If you cut expenses where you can, pay off debt, whatever, get a double effect, what, or what I call a double effect of decreasing costs, and then invest that capital well, you should explode the value of your company in time. It might take five years, might take 10 years, might, might happen in six months, you don't know. But if you continue doing it over time well, the value of your company will go up, 100%, it will go up. If you do the opposite, your company's value will go down. It's the same thing. It's positive leverage, negative leverage. Positive, neg positive leverage, negative leverage. We want to use positive leverage in our businesses. Um, and the way to do that is to look for these kind of things. And this is one thing that I talk about with all the private companies I meet with, is thinking of your expenses as investments because that's truly what they are. Should I be paying for this $50,000 in paint? Should I be paying for this million, million dollars in marketing? Again, I don't remember the exact numbers from this company because they were in Indian rupees, but I'm just throwing it out there. This is an example of something you need to be looking at. And not only that, when it comes to marketing, if you don't know how to market, but you have to market in your arena, then you need to find somebody who markets well or you're essentially just burning your cash. Um, you're just wasting your cash. If you're just doing marketing just to do marketing, that doesn't work typically, especially in today's arena where there's advertising everywhere. Um, people tune out advertising and marketing unless you are specifically talking to a targeted, very targeted group of people who either like you, love you, or need to buy your service or product. Um, and again, if you don't know what you're doing in an arena, <clears throat> you need to find somebody who does it well or you're essentially burning capital. Um, again, I hope this makes sense. This is super high level stuff. Uh, again, some of the stuff I talk about in depth with some of my, uh, my clients uh, and potential clients. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your questions on this because this, again, this is a different concept that a lot of people Frankly, I don't haven't heard really any, very many people talk about. And it's, again, some super high-level stuff. So if you have any questions, it's ultra important. Uh, when you're, whether you're looking at a private business, public business to advise, or you're looking at a public company's stock. For example, is this company's expenses, again, investments, do the managers of this company, of this public stock I'm looking to buy, are they doing a good job investing in capital? Are they not? How do you know? How do you figure that out? You should be able to figure it out by looking at the margins and how they rise and fall over time related to the expenses and stuff like that. But if you don't know how to do that, what you're looking for, that's why I'm talking in this video today about this concept because it's so important. But again, I haven't heard really anybody else talk about it. Um, but you should view expenses as investments and look and figure out is this company, is this person, is this entity investing capital well or is it destroying capital? You should look at this. It's super important. It'll save you a lot of time and heartache, especially if you're investing in public companies, um, not investing or it, investing in, not investing in cash burning businesses um, and investing in cash producing, producing businesses. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you found value in this. And um, remember, this is now a podcast for free anywhere in the world. This pod, uh, this uh, series, Value Investing in Your Car. Um, if you watch it on YouTube, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe. If you like, uh, hit the bell. 
subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified anytime we release a new video. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe. Uh, blog, wherever you're listening to this, make uh, social media, make sure to comment, ask questions. Um, I hope this w- you found value in this. And uh, um, I hope I explained it well enough. Again, if I didn't, let me know in the comments below and I'll explain it even better. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.